if I recall right, Catherine Graham, the owner, publisher of the Post, had received a kind of quiet word that you were going to be a target or were a target of the KGB. What, what happened? Um, what form did this harassment take? And how did you get out of it? How did you avoid it? Well, the reason I know, well, first of all, I never pursued in depth how she came to this conclusion that we were gonna be the subject of a, a provocation, but it, it was real. Maynard Parker was then the editor, managing editor of Newsweek. He was in Moscow. He said, listen, I have this message from Catherine Graham. And uh, she thinks that there's like, you know, she's been told that there's gonna be a problem and you should probably leave. So my wife, Susan, and I took a walk around the courtyard. We consulted with a good friend who was a senior diplomat on the British embassy, and we decided to stay. Why? Because I knew by instinct that if we left, it would be a short-term relief and a long-term regret because they would have hounded us out. And my wife, whose family were diplomats and had been in Eastern Europe, she had a big stalwart capacity that perhaps others might not have had. So we decided to stay. I never drove again from the time then on until we left. Kept my hands in my pockets. Because but, they might stop you for some yeah, imaginary. They would, they would stage an accident. They did that in at least one other case. Right. They might stick something in my pocket, which they also did with Bob Toth of the LA Times. At the end of the story is for one reason or another, they had to stop harassing me and that's a whole nother lunch. But instead, Bob Toth, who was in his last days, just as I was, got picked up on the street, taken to La Fortiva, which is the KGB prison and interrogated for four days. He was allowed to go home, but no diplomats were with him. I got somehow spared, partly I think because somehow I hadn't really given in and they knew that I was leaving and I just couldn't be a problem. I don't know in any event, but why do I know this all happened? Because right after the fall of the Soviet Union, there was a per brief period when the Politburo files were open. And a friend of mine, a Newsweek guy, Fred Coleman, found a, an eight page top secret document. I have it on my wall framed, top secret in Russian signed by Andropov, the head of the KGB, which says that the Politburo devoted an entire meeting to what to do with Natan Sharansky, the dissident, right. and Osnos, the correspondent. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Sharansky, he went to prison for nine years. In the case of Osnos, they staged what they called the disaccreditation, which they attacked me. They didn't mm -hmm. expel me, because if they did that, they would lose a real colonel in New York. Mm -hmm. But right. if I didn't have the document, and I didn't have the experience, I wouldn't have written it in the book and claimed that it in fact happened. Right. Let me ask you a, a question. In, I think it was 1984, somewhere in the mid eighties, you suddenly switched professions and you made this leap from being a reporter to being a publisher. What happened there? Why did you do that? Were you disillusioned with reporting? Did you want a different kind of uh, life? Um, because they're actually pretty different as Patricia kind of indicated. Well, what happened was that I had met in Moscow, the chairman of Random House, Bob Bernstein, who, uh, Robert L. Bernstein. And uh, I gotten to know him through his visit to Moscow. I was interested in human rights, but introduced him, Shakarov and Sharansky and so forth. And he said as he was leaving, look, I don't think journalism is a fit profession for a grown man. If you ever get serious, call me. And seven years later, I did. Um, I had had the epiphany that so many reporters have. I was sent up to Stockholm as the London correspondent. And I was standing at the Bay of Stockholm next to the UPI stringer, seeing if they, we, could, we could spot the Soviet submarine that was supposedly in the water. And I said, you know, I don't know. That's an epiphany. We all have it at one time or another, then you decide what to do. Why did I leave the post? I loved the post, but I really felt that in the next 10 years, I wasn't going to learn as much as I had in the last, because I had been a correspondent for a long time, and I'd been an editor, national and foreign editor. So I kind of felt that the next period would be an extent of what I already did. Whereas publishing, yeah, whereas publishing was going to be an adventure. 
And remember, you asked me by my parents. My parents took a whole lot of risks. And what was the influence of my parents? I guess it was, without even knowing it, the willingness to take risks. And by the way, having the right wife and partner, I was willing to let me do it.